Dosing of raw materials is one of the most important steps in the process chain in the plastics industry. One term used repeatedly in this context is dosing accuracy. In this episode of Moe's Corner TV, we want to look at dosing accuracy more closely. In practice, the question of dosing accuracy is always a question of the application. In the case of low throughputs, low percentage doses are associated with very low absolute values, which can only be achieved at great effort and expense. When dosing additives, there's always a minimum amount in proportion to the main material, and slight overdosing is usually better than underdosing. Dosing accuracy is very important for plastics processing, as dosing accuracy directly influences the processing quality and the appearance of the product. Take color as an example. If you have a red product which you want to dye completely red, and this red produces a change in tone from light to dark, it could be directly due to the dosing consistency. In addition, functional additives which are added during dosing may also influence the product quality considerably. This can affect the safety aspect when producing medical products, for example, as mechanical or chemical properties of the final product may have been altered. Dosing accuracy also influences the efficiency and cost-effectiveness of the dosing process. When using an expensive color pigment or an effect pigment, which can cost several hundred euros per kilo, it makes a big difference if you have to use a small or large percentage of the pigment. If the required effect can be achieved with a minimum percentage of 1.8%, but you have a dosing unit which fluctuates, you would have to add color at 2% or 2.5% to guarantee the minimum percentage. However, if your dosing unit is more accurate, you can get much closer to the minimum value and make considerable savings on color. Mo recently found out that he likes his coffee best with 6 grams of sugar added per cup. This is equivalent to one and a half teaspoons or a third of a tablespoon. In order to always get the best tasting coffee, he wants to try different spoons. For his experiment, he makes 10 dosages each with a teaspoon and a tablespoon, weighs out the total weight and divides this figure by 10. The result is that Mo doses an average of 6.7 grams using the teaspoon and 6.5 grams when using the tablespoon. In conclusion, the tablespoon appears to be more precise. Just to be sure, he checks his result in real life. Mo finds out that he likes the teaspoon sugared cup of coffee much better than the tablespoon sugared coffee. What is dosing consistency? Let's take a look at the diagram of the two test series. It becomes clear that the variations in material weight differ, although the overall result is similar. What is a tolerance range? The tolerance range is closely related to the term dosing consistency. It refers to the from two ranges of the material weight through which the individual material runs in the dosing element at defined intervals. The better the dosing consistency, the smaller the tolerance range and the closer you can get to the set point value. What is user error? In a nutshell, it's the human factor. An example. If Mo uses new, smaller cups or switches from sugar to sweetener and doesn't adapt the dose. However, there are also non-human sources of error. There are, for example, vibrations, such as machines operating nearby. High levels of humidity in summer may also affect the accuracy of the dosing result, in particular in the case of hydroscopic source materials. An uneven material consistency can also lead to fluctuating dosing accuracy. The properties of the material to be dosed can greatly affect dosing accuracy. Does the material tend to form bridges? What are its flow properties? Does static charging play a role? Questions that are relevant for choosing a dosing device are also important for dosing accuracy. Dosing accuracy refers to adhering to the set point values required for the individual process. It depends on many factors. It's important to consider the complete system and not just the individual subsystems.